A special welcome to all the veterans joining us today. Today we commemorate the day in remembering and honoring those who defend our Constitution and thus our right to be safe and free. We thank those who serve for their courage, sacrifice, and noble service. Throughout my life, I was always very proud that my dad served in World War II and remember listening to his many stories of being in the Army under General Patton. Those who serve are our heroes and will forever be in our memory, forever in our hearts, and we will forever be thankful to them. Now I would like to introduce the Arlington Fire Department Color Guard, consisting of Martin Conroy, Marines, and Brian Borges, Army. Now I would like to introduce our honored guests. Eugene Downing, Army, Vietnam. Robert Hunter, Air Force, Korea. Bill McCarthy, Navy, Vietnam. Andrew Jans, Navy. Jeff Melton, Navy, Iraq in Enduring Freedom. Bill Hainer, Air Force, Vietnam. Joe Connors, Army, Korea. Frank Leveroni, Army, Vietnam. Eli Katsos, Army, World War II. Robin Tossi Jr., Army, Korea. Jeff Chunglo, Navy, Director of the Veterans Service in Arlington, Operations Enduring Freedom. Bill Cameron, Navy, Korea. John Powers, Army, Okinawa, Philippines. Bob Devlin, Army, Vietnam. Rick Jones, Marines. Dennis Corbett, 
Air Force, Navy, Vietnam. John Gonsalves, Army, Vietnam. Thomas Dayhill, Army, World War II. Steve Carlson, Air Force, Vietnam. You can be seated. And now I'd like to introduce Brendan McNamara. Okay. Uh, Memorial Day is not about division. It is about reconciliation. Memorial Day, originally called Decoration Day, is a day of remembrance for those who have died in our nation's service. There are many stories as to the originals of Memorial Day, with over two dozen cities and towns laying claim to being the birthplace of Memorial Day. While Waterloo, New York was officially declared the birthplace of Memorial Day by President Lyndon Johnson in May 1966, it's difficult to prove conclusively the origins of the day. It is more likely that it had many separate beginnings, each city planning a gathering of people to honor the war dead in the 1860s. They tapped into the general human need to honor our dead. Each contributed honorably to the growing movement. Okay, if we could all now please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you very much. Memorial Day is a time to remember and celebrate. Though sadness touches our hearts, courage and bravery are two Memorial Day traditions that will carry on long after we are all gone. These Memorial Day poems are a salute to the finest and the bravest. Here to recite a salute to the brave, I present Claire Ewan, Sabrina Liberatory, and Chelsea Miller. Heroes, they are fallen, but never forgotten. The brave, they did save. This Memorial Day, we remember the flag forever waves for all that stood tall. The sacrifice for our quality of life is truly cherished and blessed. 
the lost. Many were lost at such a cost. Their blood shed for what freedom meant. Some never returned and we yearned to say, we remember you every Memorial Day. Memorial Day prayer poem. Today, we decorate the mighty graves of military men who paid for our right to stay safe. Oh Lord, we do pray that you help them all find their way. Watch over their families and bring your beautiful faith to heal them and light the journey's path to their eternal peace. For our love, they never betrayed. Oh Lord, bless them all this Memorial Day. Amen. Memorial Day is a time to be very proud of all that fought for us. Memorial Day poems help give us a voice to the meaning of Memorial Day. It is a time for remembrance and celebration. The spirit and feeling of Memorial Day should be celebrated by us all. Remember and rejoice this Memorial Day. Thank you for reading these poems. And now, Flanders Fields presented by Mark Newell and Sophia Sala. In Flanders Field is a war poem in the form of a rondo, written during the First World War by Canadian physician and Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. He was inspired to write it on May 3rd, 1915, after presiding over the funeral of friend and fellow soldier Alexis Helmer, who died in the Second Battle of Ypres. Uh, according to legend, fellow soldiers retrieved the poem after McRae, initially unsatisfied with his work, discarded it. In Flanders Field, was first published on December 8th of that year in the London-based magazine, Punch. It is one of the most popular and most quoted poems from the war. Its references to the red poppies that grew over the graves of fallen soldiers resulted in the remembrance poppy becoming one of the world's most recognized memorial symbols for soldiers who have died in conflict. In Flanders Fields by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, Canadian Army. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And now I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, Steve Carlton, United States, Steve Carlson, excuse me, United States Air Force, Arlington High School, class of 1966. have something to say and they've touched on a lot that I've had this that I had to say before uh, I even got here one of the things that uh, is dear to me is Memorial Day it's a time of remembrance to remember people men and women that have uh, paid the ultimate price to in the service of their country and uh, Memorial Day and Veterans Day are often confused. They, some people think that they're both the same, and they aren't. Memorial Day is a day to remember the men and women that have, like I say, have paid the ultimate price, while Veterans Day is a day of celebration of the service of uh, President past members of the armed services in this country. Um, Memorial Day, as one young gentleman here said, started after the Civil War, and it was originally called uh, Decoration Day. 
and it wasn't until 1971 that it was declared a federal holiday by Congress. And uh, unfortunately, it took that long. But there's been veterans in in this area. Of them. You know, the Revolutionary War started here, so your veterans, you know, you can get down to the cemetery on Pleasant Street, and in there find people that served during the Revolutionary War. Those those people, you know, men or women, mostly men, deserve to be remembered on today, as do the members of, you know. Veterans from the Civil War, First World War, Second World War, Korea, Vietnam, and there's been many conflicts since then. Um, Memorial Day, to me, has a personal note. Um, ten years ago, I was honored to uh, be involved in a memorial that's down at uh, Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Um, I was part of it, and I'm going to ask these two gentlemen to stand as I say their name, uh, Dennis Corbett and uh, Bill McCarthy, along with a fellow classmate of mine, Jim Began, who's not here, were part of a memorial committee for 10 young men that were killed in Vietnam. And these men, they'll, they'll never be old, and it was an honor for me to, to do this. Uh, some people in town say that it was my doing. No, I didn't do it myself, and I honored these people. And there's two people that come to mind that are on this memorial. One of them is uh, Joseph Grant. And right down the bottom of Appleton Street, there is a memorial for him. He was a Medal of Honor recipient. That's the highest honor that a veteran can receive. And another one was uh, Alan Avery. And he was a personal friend. He was one of my older brother's best friends. In his service, he was what they called a, a pararescue jumper or a PJ. There are over 200 people that are alive today, or were that he saved their lives um, during Vietnam, and unfortunately, he lost his life in 1972. Um, and Memorial Day, it's one day out of the year, but it's not. It's not just one day. We should we should remember these people in this service. All year long, whether it's, you know, yeah, gee, I'm going to remember them the 15th of January or, you know, birthdays or whatever. And it will, it may touch you, you know, you never know. And I found this out when I did the memorial, how many people were actually intertwined between these 10 people. Um, you never know, you may have a, a great uncle or, you know, whatever that was, that was involved in, in one of these conflicts and is no longer here. Or maybe, you know, since Vietnam, a lot of women, especially in today's conflicts. Um, but you never know who, when it's going to, you know, who it could be. It could be somebody that, you know, might be a, a good friend of yours may have somebody. And it, it will touch you. And all I ask is that you, you know, look at it not just one day, you know, not as a day off from school or... It's, it's much more than that. It's, it's remembrance of these people, men and women, young, old, that have, you know, paid the ultimate price for our country, for our way of life as it is now. And yes, it's, it's changing. It's, it's not the same as it was when I went through here, this school, 50 odd years ago. You know, I mean, things have changed. And in, in parting, I'd like to say, you know, I, I certainly appreciate um, being invited here out of the last 10 years. I think I've missed maybe three of them. And this is the second time that I've been asked to speak. The first time was after the, the year after the, <coughs> excuse me, the year after the memorial dedication. And I appreciate all you, you young ladies and gentlemen, you know, doing what you do and paying homage to, to the veterans of this town. And, you know, may you keep it up for many years to come. Thank you. And now we have Mr. Meteor and our artist in middle school band doing the military escort and armed forces on parade for the United States Navy, United States Army, United States Marines, the United States Air Force.
Thank you. In a mother's eyes, presented by Maya Patel Cassini and Michelle Mahoney. In a mother's eyes, in memory of PSC Lynn Robin Crotzer, USMC K1A 1969 Vietnam. The day our flagpole was ready, we had no flag to fly. A mother stepped forward and said, I have a flag, with a tear in her eye. It was given to me the day that we laid my son to rest. He was a true blue soldier who gave his life his best. I got a knot in my throat and a chill in my bones. A tear rolled down my face. A mother lost her son at war, the pain on her face. In a mother's eyes, you can see red, white, and blue. In a mother's eyes, you can see pain so true. Freedom comes at the cost of sadness and loss, you can see in a mother's eyes. When someone puts their life on the line so others can be free, it's a selfless act of courage and love. How thankful we all should be. And when I look at the flag today, I see a whole new meaning there. I see the men and the women who died for her, so in this freedom we can share. In a mother's eyes, you can see red, white, and blue. In a mother's eyes, you can see the pain so true. Freedom comes with the cost of sadness and loss. You can see in a mother's eyes. In a mother's eyes, you can see red, white, and blue. In a mother's eyes, you can see the pain so true. Freedom comes with the cost of sadness and loss. You can see in a mother's eyes. Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington County, Virginia is a military cemetery in the United States of America established during the American Civil War on the grounds of Arlington House, formerly the estate of the family of Confederate General Robert E. Lee's wife, Mary Anna Lee, a great-granddaughter of Martha Washington. The ceremony is situated directly across the Potomac River from the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Arlington, presented by Sophia Girioni and Gabby Missouri. Arlington, I never thought this is where I'd settle down. I thought I'd die an old man back in my hometown. They gave me this plot of land, me and some other men, for a job well done. There's a big white house sits on a hill just up the road. The man inside, he cried the day they brought me home. They folded up a flag and told my mom and dad, we're proud of your son. I remember dad brought me there when I was eight. We searched all day to find out where my granddad lay. And when we finally found that cross, he said, son, this is what it cost to keep us free. Now here I am, a thousand stones away from him. He recognized me on the first day I came in, and it gave me a chill when he clicked his heels and saluted me. And I'm proud to be on this peaceful piece of property. I'm on sacred ground and in the best of company. I'm thankful for those, thankful for the things I've done. I can rest in peace. I am one of the chosen ones. I made it to Arlington. And every time I hear 21 guns, I know they brought another here home to us. We're thankful for those, thankful for the things we've done. We can rest in peace because we are the chosen ones. We made it to Arlington. Dust to dust, don't cry for us. We've made it to Arlington. Arlington High School Columns, a tribute to those lost in the World War. Presented by Ruby Donnelly. Located at the Columns at Arlington High School, there is a plaque, a tribute, in memoriam, 1914 to 1918, in honor of the members of Arlington High School who served in the World War in defense of liberty. You wore your courage as you wore your youth. Presented by the classes of 1921 to 1929, Richmond F. Collins, John, C. McCar John J. McCarthy Jr., Raymond Taylor, Richard W. Edwards, Arthur Vale, Henry Bradley Frost, Warren Robinson, Joseph W's Winge. They gave their merry youth away. This Tree Grows, presented by Lane Hogan. Across from 
the columns on the front lawn at Arlington High School, there is a small monument adorned with four U.S. flags in memory of U.S. Army Special Forces Michael D. Camerlingo, AHS 1965, who at the age of 22 gave his life in Vietnam in honor of his country on the second day of November 1969. A tree was planted at this site. This tree grows. Time cannot break the bird's wing from the bird. Bird and wing together go down, one feather. No thing that ever flew, not the lark, not you, can die as others do. Thank you. Thank you, Lane. And now the Audison Middle School Band will present an American March. They would wait on their f my front lawn for David Busfield, their coach, to come home. And they would play with me, wrestle me, tease me, throw me around. And there, Dickie was a really good guy. And here to tell you a lot more about him is Danielle Kelly. Buzzle Field. Located on Summer Street, Richard Dickey Buzzle graduated from Arlington High School in 1960. While at AHS, he managed the football, ice hockey, and baseball teams, as well as being an honor roll student. His mother, Madeline, was the secretary to the superintendent of Arlington Public Schools, Mr. William Gibbs. He was appointed to the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Upon graduation from the Naval Academy, he was commissioned as a lieutenant in the United States Navy. The field is dedicated by the town of Arlington to the memory of Lieutenant Richard H. Buzzle, born September 27, 1942, 
killed in action on December 19, 1970 in South Vietnam. The memorial was erected at the field site by his family and friends on May 20, 1973. Thank you, Dickie Buzzle. For whom the bugle sounds, presented by Mark Newell and Brendan McNamara. I know this place, the peaceful scene, the stones, the flags, the grass so green. A warm May sun, a bright blue sky, beneath the, beneath the ground, the heroes lie. They come to this place every year to visit them and shed a tear. For some were young and some were old, each with a story that should be told. Mothers and fathers, daughters and sons, they all remember what these heroes have done. Old friends here come to reminisce, to talk to, to talk to old buddies they dearly miss. In Vietnam, in the Mekong Delta, the mud, the sun, it gave no shelter. In battles there, you stayed the course, proud soldier of the River Rhine Force. Your name now etched in this long black wall, for all gave some, but you gave all. They pass this place in silent thought, and dreams the battles are still being fought. I come today with my bugle in hand, with tears and sorrow I take my stand. I press my bugle to trembling lips, to honor those on land, air, and ships. Sleep, my friend, and be at rest, those gathered above send you their best. Moist tears now, said, now shed on this sacred ground, I know for whom the bugle sounds. To honor the soldiers of the 9th Infantry Division, Mobile River and Force, dedicated to all those who serve in the Vietnam War, no one dies till their memory dies. Thank you. Uh, while doing lunch duty uh, last week, or actually, uh, Yes, it was last week. Uh, a young lady came up to me and said, um, do you have anything else uh, to read? And I said, well, let me look. And I was very fortunate to have uh, Sophia read the history of TAP. So here is Sophia Harris. TAPS is actually a variation of an earlier bugle call known as Scott's Tattoo, which was used in the U.S. from 1835 until 1860 and was arranged in its present form by the Union Army Brigadier, General Daniel Butterfield, an American Civil War general and Medal of Honor recipient who commanded the 3rd Brigade of the 1st Division in the 5th Army Corps of the Potomac while at Harrison's Landing, Virginia in July 1862 to replace a previous French bugle call used to signal lights out. Bugle Oliver W. Norton of Erie, Pennsylvania was the first to sound the call. Within months, TAPS was used by both Union and Confederate forces. It was officially recognized by the U.S. Army in 1874. TAPS is sounded during each of the 2,500 military wreath ceremonies conducted at the tomb of an unknown soldier every year, including ones held on Memorial Day. The ceremonies are viewed by many people, including veterans, school groups, and foreign officials. TAPS is also sounded nightly in military installations at non-deployed locations to indicate that it, that it is lights out. When TAPS is sounded at a funeral, it is customary for serving members of the military or veterans to salute. The corresponding gesture for civilians is to place their right hand over their heart.
like to thank everybody for attending our Memorial Day ceremony. As the veterans are escorted to the rear of the gymnasium, please give them a nice round of applause. Thank you.